Llama 3 model from Meta has taken the AI world by storm and we are continuing the coverage of this brand new Llama 3 model on our channel. In this video, I am going to show you how you can fine tune this Llama 3 model with the help of Orpo. Orpo is a new method through which you can fine tune the models. I already have covered couple of fine tuning of Llama 3 models with the help of Unsloth and with the help of Torch Tune on the channel. If you are interested, you can watch these two videos on your screen. For the purpose of this video, I am going to use a collab created by Maxim Labone and huge thanks to him for releasing the collab and also this great hugging face model card because otherwise it won't be possible to create this video. So <clears throat> huge thanks to him for this awesome work. I already have interviewed Maxim by the way on my channel and if you're interested you can watch his interview. Uh, very very insight interview and amazing uh, person. So thanks Labon uh, for this great great work for the community. Having said that let me first tell you what exactly Orpo is and then we will delve into the Lama 3 related things. Now, if you go through this Orpo paper, you will encounter this diagram. This diagram tells you what exactly this Orpo is. Orpo is a new exciting fine tuning technique that combines the traditional supervised fine tuning or SFT and preference alignment stages into a single process. This reduces the computational resources and also the time required for training. Orpo already has outperformed various other methods of this tuning and alignment on various model sizes. I already have covered Orpo in detail on the uh, channel if you're interested, but I think it's a good time to explain it in more detail with the help of this awesome diagram by Maxim. Now, if you look at it, the first row shows that uh, first there is a raw text, you start training your large language model from scratch and this is a traditional way of training it. So once you pre-train a model, a neural network on raw text, you get a base model and then from that base model you sort of fine tune it on instruction and answer. This is called a supervised fine tuning and then from there you get an instruct model. Then you give it some preference data set where you tell it this is the preferred answer and this is the rejected answer and then you get a chat model. This is called as preference alignment. You do it through direct preference optimization or DPU and there are few other techniques too. You see that first there is a pre-training, supervised fine tuning and then preference alignment. What Orpo does in the second row, it combines this supervised fine tuning and preference alignment and then it just provides us a chat model. So with the help of Orpo, not only it is quicker, you need less resources and it is quite performant too. So in other words, instruction tuning and preference alignment are essential techniques for adapting these LLMs to specific tasks. Traditionally, this involves a multi-stage process. First, supervise fine tuning on instructions to adapt the model to the target domain, followed by Preference alignment methods like reinforcement learning with human feedback or DPO direct preference optimization to increase the likelihood of generating preferred responses over the rejected ones. But there are some limitations here and few of the uh, drawbacks though it works perfectly well with DPO but still there are few drawbacks because SFT effectively adapts the model to the desired domain but sometimes it increases the probability of generating undesirable results instead of preferred one and that is why we have to do the preference alignment and that is where you know we have an extra step but this research the ORPO this um, offers an elegant solution to this problem by combining instruction tuning and preference alignment into a single monolithic training process so what ORPO do, does is it modifies the standard language modeling objective combining the negative log likelihood, likelihood loss with an odd ratio term. And there are a lot of detail which you can uh, read through this paper. Really fascinating read by the way. Okay, that said and done, let's uh, go to our Google Colab and try to get it installed. And if you don't know what Lama 3 is, 
Lama series are latest family of LLMs developed by Meta. These models were trained on an extensive data set of 15 trillion tokens. Two more, and there are two sizes, seven, 8 billion and 70 billion, and a 400 billion one will be released very soon. So, both uh, the 70 billion model of Lama 3 has already demonstrated impressive performance, scoring 82 on MMLU benchmark and 81.7 on human eval, and that is a massive. Lama 3 model has also increased the context length up to 8K, and you can uh, increase it up to 32K with the rope. And additionally, the model uses a new tokenizer, which is Tick Token, with a 128k token vocabulary that reduces the number of tokens required to encode text by 15%. The vocabulary also explains the bump from 7 billion to 8 billion parameter, by the way. And the knowledge cutoff of 7, uh, 8 billion model is December, uh, March 2023, and for 70 billion is December 2023, which is quite latest. Now, let me go to my Google Colab, and that is where we are going to run it through with um, courtesy to Maxim's notebook, and then we will get cracking. So the first thing we need to do is to go to runtime and change the runtime to T4. Now I will just uh, start it because I think my GPU is not that powerful. I think you would at least need the L4 for a proper installation, but at least you would have the steps, and you can. Uh, do it yourself and I will drop the link to Colab in future's description too. Let's start it. I already have set the runtime, I hope. Yep, I did. And then let's run it. Let's wait for all the prerequisites to get installed. While all these prerequisites are getting installed, um, also one more thing you need to do is to go to VanDB website, which is vandb.ai, W A N D B dot AI, and then sign up with the free. Uh, for a free account with your email and then just simply right click on this profile picture user settings and then in your profile scroll down you will see the api keys just get the api key and then go back to google colab click on key sign and save it in the van db variable this is not mandatory but just for some instrumentation um, it is being used in this colab so that is why i have also set it Let's wait for these prerequisites to get installed. All the prerequisites are done. Now let's import the stuff and set the base model. So you see what we are doing here is we are just importing some of the stuff here. And then because we'll be getting the data set, transformers library, and then TRL. And then we are specifying our Llama, 8, Llama 3 8 billion model. And this is the name of the new model. You can change it as you wish. And I'm just getting that VanDB token and then setting the launch accordingly. So let's run it and let's wait for it to finish. It is going to take a bit of a time. That is done. You can ignore that warning for now. And now let's get our LoRa configuration. So this is a QLoRa, quantized LoRa. LoRa is low rank adaptation which shrinks the size of the model and we are loading it in 4-bit and then we are setting the LoRa configuration with parameter efficient fine tuning and these are various parameters which we are setting and I have described them in great detail in my other videos so please search if you are interested then we are loading the model and then we are setting the chat format so let's run it okay so what this is saying is that this is a gated repo what it means is that you would need to sign into hugging face so because for the gated model you have to log in so let me show you how to log into hugging face first go to hugging face website and on the top right click on your profile photo go to settings then on the left click on access tokens and there you see that i have this token llama 3 you can create your own token by click on new token just give it a name and read is fine so let's grab this token from here and that is what we need to set in our colab in your colab simply run this code which is installing hugging face hub and then i would need to put exclamation mark here let's run it it is going to ask for our notebook login let me grab that token 
again and then put it here it is going to ask me for the token that's it there you go so it is asking me for a token just put your token here login and then login is successful now we can proceed with our earlier stuff let's click on code paste your LoRa configuration and QLoRa configuration and load the model and let's run it you see this time it is working it is loading the model now the model there are four shards of model and i think the first three shards are five gig and the last one is just over one gig so around 16 17 gig you would need hopefully uh, it will i would have that much space so let's wait for it to finish and then we will proceed further the model is almost done it is loading the shards on my gpu hopefully it will fit in let's see all the shards are done which is great now for the purpose of this video i am going to use a preference data set by maxim again and let me show you the data set so this is a data set and it's a preference data set so on the very right we have the prompt we have the chosen answer for that prompt and the rejected answer and you can ignore the source for now so this is a data set which we are going to use plus i'm just getting 10 rows from it just for the sake of completion so let's run it and you see it should be done very very quickly that is done now let's specify our orpo parameters plus let's start the training so if i scroll up you see that these are the orpo arguments and for example in this one we have this learning rate so orpo uses very low learning rates compared to traditional sft or even dpo so this value 86 comes from the original paper which i just showed you and roughly corresponds to an sft learning rate of le5 then we have beta 0.1 it is a lam uh, lambda parameter in the paper with a default value of this and then there are various other parameters like max length batch size which are set to use as much vram as available so i'm not sure how much uh, is available here but let's see and then we are specifying our trainer and then we are training it and then saving the new model so let's run it it is going to take a bit of a time of course so let's wait for this to finish so i'm going to let it run because it is going to take a bit of a time but really hats off to uh, Paxim for creating this because I think uh, otherwise, you know, it will be a lot of struggle to get it working. So again, thanks a lot. And you can, it will generate a model. You can upload it to Hugging Face or save it locally. You can merge the adapter with the base model and then you can do a lot of things. Of course, you can use your own data set or you can uh, just point you know, point tune it on any other data set. So that's it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, then please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching.